before we begin today's video, I would like to give a shout out to three of our newest subscribers. John B, Bruce Barr, and Autumn Fantasy. Thank you all for subscribing, and welcome to the family. And now on with today's video. Here we have a stick, it's a gun, it's a sword, it's whatever weapon you want it to be. And now it's on fire. The Druid Artificer. I'll be honest, I wasn't sure about making a multi-class with this concept in mind, and it sounded ridiculous. I wouldn't even know what to call it. How, how would you put these two names together? Artificer Druid would be... Arterud? Um... Drufaiser? I think I have an idea. What about... Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons Character Concept Optimized, where we take a look at a multi-class character concept and try to min-max it to its fullest, taking whatever race, background, and class features we can put together to make an optimal build. Uh, and sometimes we try to put a story reason behind the two classes coming together. Uh, it doesn't always work out, but we try our very best to make it cohesive. And I think I finally figured out how to make a Druid Artificer build. Or as I'm going to be calling it, the Solar Punk. Which is actually a type of fantasy genre similar to steampunk, but instead of steam or some sort of dystopian era, it is using plants and solar energy. It is literally technology and nature working together in harmony. And yes, this does sound like a weird concept for a character, especially when you consider that both the Druid and the Artificer use different modifiers for their spell casting classes. On top of that, the Druid specifically states that it will not wear any armor or use shields made of metal. Some people go as far to say that they won't even use metal when they're weapons. I even made that argument when I was making my first iteration of Chandra, the planeswalker from Kaladesh, which actually is a pretty good example of a solar punk campaign setting. Kind of. I think it's more steampunky, but there are aspects of solar punk in there. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off topic. Like I was saying, it is kind of weird to have the Artificer and the Druid to mix together, since the Artificer normally focuses on technology, being able to create magical effects through their tools. But as we have been discussing these past couple of builds, Jenny D has a point. Artificers don't have to be steampunk. They don't have to be tech-related at all. And I'm going to have to disagree with her on the artillerist here. The artillerist is probably the only one of the four artificer subclasses that strictly is not tech technologically connected to the flavor. It is literally just a pile of sticks. And that's what I hated about the artillerist. It was just sticks. Your 
Eldritch Cannon is just a wand that shoots out flames, a force field, or just a concussive blast. Then you have your arcane firearm, which is a quarterstaff. It is literally just a giant stick with a large hole drilled from one end to the other. And you put some magic runes on it to let you cast your spells through it like a, a fantasy gun. I of course am being a little bit biased against the artillerist and that is because when the art the artificer first came out in unearthed arcana we were promised a gunsmith we were going to have a actual thunderous cannon we were going to be able to recreate our own ammunition for our cannons. And it was fabulous. But they took that away from us and gave us the artillerist, which is just a literal pile of sticks. Anyway, enough of my biased opinions. Let's go ahead and get in today's build. And we have some goals. Of course, we are going to need our race, background, artificer levels. We're going to need to know what item infusions we're taking. We need our artificer specialist, and we need to know what spells we're using. For our druid, we need to know how many levels we have in this class. We need our druid circle and our spells. For this build, we are going to use fire damage and fire damage exclusively. There are going to be a couple of spells that don't do fire damage, but we are mostly focusing on the ability to burn our opponents to cinders. With the added bonus of being able to heal on the side. And you already know where I'm going with this. So let's go ahead and not dilly-dally and tackle our race, which is going to be a tiefling. Now, this one is a little bit tricky because there are a couple of different sub-races of tieflings that could work for this build. But I decided to go with the Bloodline of Zariel, mostly for that Searing Smite, which is going to give us an extra 2d6 fire damage on our weapon attacks. Of course, we can only use this once per day, but it's at its second level, which is pretty good. We also get access to Branding Smite, which allows us to deal 3d6 extra radiant damage. But we mostly want to focus on the Searing Smite, as it is fire damage related which is going to help us when we have certain abilities that allow us to boost our fire spells. That 3d6 radiant damage is no joke, but the Searing Smite's secondary effect of being able to continuously burn our target if they fail their constitution saving throw at the start of each of their turns is really good which is why I think we'll be focusing on it for our calculations. Next is going to be our background. Of course, we are going with the Giant Foundling, which will give us the access to the Feet Strike of the Giants. We're going to pick the Fire Strike ability, which is going to give our melee weapon attacks an extra 1d10 fire damage. Pretty sweet. Moving on to Artificer, we are taking 10 levels in this class, giving us 10d8 hit dice. Starting hit points is going to be 8 plus our Constitution modifier, with additional hit points being 1d8 plus card modifier per Artificer level after the first. For your proficiencies, you'll be getting access to Light Armor, Medium Armor, and Shields. 
simple weapons, thieves tools, tinkers tools, and the herbalist kit. Your saving throws are constitution and intelligence, and your skills are going to be medicine and nature. You get access to your magical tinkering and spell casting using your intelligence modifier. For your infused items, we're going to go ahead and pick the Armor of Magical Strength Enhanced Arcane Focus, which is going to give us a plus two to our spell's damage output. We're going to get access to Enhanced Defense, we're going to get Replicate Bag of Holding, Replicate Gauntlets of Ogre Power just for the heck of it, we're going to get Replicate Winged Boots, we're going to get Resistant Armor which is going to resist force damage, and we're going to get the Spell Refueling Ring. For our Artifice Specialist, we are going to get the Artillerist. This gives us the bonus proficiency of Woodcarver's tools. Our Artillerist spells are Shield, Thunder Wave, Scorching Ray, Shatter, Fireball, and Wind Wall. We get access to Eldritch Cannon, Arcane Firearm, Explosive Cannon. We also get access to Right Tool for the Job, Tool Expertise, Flush of Genius, and Metamagic Adept. I chose the Artillerist mostly because of that pile of sticks joke that I made a little while ago, and the fact that the Arcane Firearm is able to give us an extra 1d8 damage to any spell from the Artificer spell list that we cast, and Green Flame Blade just happens to be an Artificer spell which will be on our spell list at the end of this video. And since our Arcane Firearm is a quarter staff, that is going to be perfectly fine, giving our Arcane Firearm an extra damage output, which we will be calculating once we get into the feats. Not to mention the Arcane Focus will get a plus two, like we mentioned a little bit earlier. Moving on to Druid level 10, we get 10d8 hit dice and extra hit points equal to 1d8 plus our constitution modifier per Druid level. We get access to Druidic, our spell casting which uses our wisdom modifier. We get access to Wild Shape which is going to be used for our Druid Circle features. Our Druid Circle is Circle of Wildfire. We get access to the following circle spells. Burning Hands, Cure Wounds, Flaming Spheres, Scorching Ray, Plant Growth, We Revivify, Aura of Life, Fire Shield, Flame Strike, and Mass Cure Wounds. We also have access to Summon Wildfire Spirit, Enhanced Bond, and Cauterizing Flames. Enhanced Bond is the key here, as any spell that we cast that deals fire damage gets a 1d8 boost to its damage output. Or we can give that 1d8 increase to any healing spells that we cast, which is pretty good. We also get access to Cauterizing Flames, which lets our fallen enemies turn into little wisps of flames which we can detonate to deal some extra damage or use them to heal nearby allies which is pretty useful and since we are a druid we do get access to shillelagh which will turn our quarterstaff into a 1d8 plus wisdom modifier weapon. Which, again, very useful. Especially when we tack on some of these other features. Alright, now that we have our magic stick with inscribed runes and our wildfire ally we need some feats and we're going to go with elemental adept and choosing fire as our damage output this means that our fire spells ignore resistances and we're able to re-roll any lower numbers but we're mostly keen on that no resistance to fire damage we're also going to go with the racial feat of Flames of Felgathos, which will increase our Intelligence or Charisma modifier by one, 
or our intelligence or charisma score by one to a maximum of 20. We'll just do intelligence since we kind of need that for our artificer. When you roll for fire damage for a spell you cast, you can re-roll any ones on the fire damage dice. But you must use the new roll even if it's another one. So that's pretty useful, very similar to our elemental adept. But what comes in handy is that secondary feature. Whenever you cast a spell that deals fire damage, you can cause flames to wreath you until the end of your next turn. The flames don't harm you or your possessions, and they shed bright light out to 30 feet and dim light for an additional 30 feet. While the flames are present, any creature within 5 feet of you that hits you with a melee attack takes 1d4 fire damage. That is a lot of damage. Now, let's go ahead and do some calculations here. We have our quarterstaff doing a plus 2 since it is our arcane focus, enhanced arcane focus. Thanks to Shillelagh, it is going to be dealing 1d8 plus our Wisdom modifier, which should be a plus 4 at this point. We get access to Green Flame Blade, which at our level is going to do an extra 3d8 fire damage on the initial attack, and it will also deal 3d8 plus our Wisdom modifier to one nearby enemy. We also have our Arcane Firearm. When we cast Green Flame Blade giving us an extra 1d8 on top of that damage. And since it's dealing fire damage, our enhanced bond from our water wildfire spirit is also increasing that damage output by 1d8 for a grand total of 6d8 plus 6. And don't forget the giant foundling's fire strike for an extra 1d10 fire damage on top of that. Oh, that's a lot of fire damage. But uh, only 5d8 is technically counting towards that fire damage. Anywho, going to other types of damage that we can be dealing. Thanks to Searing Smite, we can deal an extra 2d8 fire damage with some extra damage on top of that at the start of each of our target's next turns until they succeed on their save. Thanks to the Flames of Felagos, we get an extra 1d4 for anyone that hits us. A Shorter Launch Stride is another spell we get access to, which deals 1d6 points of damage to anybody we pass by. We also have access to Flame Blade, which is a 3d6 weapon that we can summon. So we have a lot of different ways that we can burn our opponents. Here's how I imagine a turn will go. We can start out with Flame Blade or even go for a Searing Smite on our Shillelagh, which is a pretty good start, giving us a grand total of 3d8 plus 4, and it will cause our opponent to slowly burn. On our next turn, we'll go ahead and go for the Green Flame Blade, that way it can deal damage to an opponent. If we've already burnt our first enemy to a crisp, we can go ahead and use a Shard of Launch Stride and start moving to the next furthest opponent away to start dealing damage to them. Because they're probably a little bit stronger than some of these weaklings that we've already set on fire with a Shard of Launch Stride. And then continue to Green Flame Blade while we have Shillelagh active. We can also go ahead and do a Flame Blade, just in case we're not dealing enough damage. Now, with that being said, we're done with the build, but not the video, because we do have spells to go over. For your Artificer spells, I would recommend going for Firebolt, Green Flame Blade, and Sword Burst for our cantrips. For first level spells, we have Cure Wounds, Grease, Tasha's Caustic Brew, and Long Strider. Second level, we have Continual Flame, Heat, Metal, and Lesser Restoration. For your third level spells, I went for a Shard Launch Stride, and I forgot that we already had the Revivify spell thanks to our Wildfire Druid spells, so you could 
in theory, go for a different spell other than Revivify. For your druid spells, here are the ones that I picked for this build. Control Flames, Create Bonfire, Primal Savagery, and of course Shillelagh. For your first level spells, we have access to Charm Person, Fairy Fire, Healing Word, and Purify Food and Drink. If you do not have this spell in your spell list, then I feel sorry for your party who is currently being poisoned by the royals that you are currently attempting to take down. For your second level spells, we have access to Bark Skin, Flame Blade, Healing Spirit, and Wither and Bloom. Your third level spells are going to be Conjure Animals, Erupting Earth, and Dispel Magic. For your fourth level spells, we have Conjure Minor Elementals and Elemental Bane. This will drop any resistances on certain damage types, just in case we need to damage our foes with a different type of damage. Like, say, Acid or maybe Poison. And at 5th level, we have Greater Restoration. As a healer, you most definitely need this spell, especially if you have characters who are refusing to uh, sleep. Because they're going to get exhaustion. And with that being said, that is all the time I have for you today. You do not have to take this build Point by point, you can do whatever you want with your own solar punk build. This is just what I thought would be the most optimal. What type of characters would you create using the Artificer and Druid? Let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, this has been Drehan. And next time we take a look at the Artificer, we're going to be making the Toy Maker. Jiddy D is going to be proud of that one. And but for now, I am offline.